not any issues. There we go, Jack has been banned out, so it's all fine. Good stuff. I will be spectating over the stream for the duration of Champion Select, and then when we get into game, I'll be reading from the same page as Messers, and we'll be on par, but for, until then, he's going to have to guide me through it. Yeah, Jackson and Renekton, the only bands that have came through. I'm keeping an eye as well on the voting system. 246 votes for SK, 103 for TCM. Oh, damn. So that's, that's pretty one-sided in chat. Uh, seems to be taking an age for SK Gaming to ban their second champion here. Maybe Cassadin, because Belgian Beast plays an incredibly strong Cassadin, but it's going to be Karzix instead, so going against JWoww, can't blame them. Yesterday we saw JWoww, I believe his score was somewhere around 8 for 1 at the end, he was just crushing at top lane with the Kazakhs pick. Yeah, a ton of respect bans coming in for the top lane at the moment. Jax is just very difficult to deal with, and especially if they're looking for like the early dive, um, which we've seen is very characteristic of SKN and DTCM, something we've seen a lot during this tournament matters, is they'll go for the 2v1 swap ups and try and get the 3v1 gank off underneath turret. Jax makes it very difficult to do that. Um, we saw Nitrous actually pull off an amazing maneuver where he didn't die to three members of SK as they tried it. So by burning that out, that opens up um, a potential opportunity for them. And Volibear has not been banned out, something that TCM could do, but it's going to be have to, something that they bring out later on into their uh, picking phase, because they can't just pick it up and be and be safe with that. Okay, so fourth and fifth bands are Lee Sin and Shivana, and the final band from TCM, Elise. So we're not going to see the Shivana plays from Sanskaran or Lee Sin. These have been his two go-to champions in his best of five in the previous four games. So he's going to be slightly out of his comfort zone here. But Belgian Beast could pick the Kassadin. Kassadin's not been banned. And this is a champion that Belgian Beast loves to go for. Question is though, Pulse, will he first pick it? Because in doing so, he could get himself counted pretty hard. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that's always the fear with picking Kassadin so early on. There's a lot of good picks against Kassadin. Um He just really suffers from long-range mid laners who can just poke him out early. And at the same time, you want to prioritize Kassadin. You know, um, you can't allow them to pick that one up. But in res um, first pick will be Nidalee. So a little bit of a safer pick um, as you transition into the roaming phase, because it doesn't matter if you're ahead or behind. But in the laning phase, it could potentially be rough. Yeah, so Barney D's hovering over the Zyra. Uh, this is a champion they've both been battling over from supports, and that is potentially going to be the Cassadin. Waited five seconds, now switching over to Caitlyn, which is Matroko's main AD carry. And in fact, another stat for you, Matroko has played Caitlyn every single game now in this best of five. So it's not been picked against him, not been banned out. Back over to SK Gaming, that Cassadin's still up. Belgian Beast thought about it and switched back over. Yeah, his Caitlyn pick has gone under the radar, even though he's picked it every single game. He's very solid on that champion. We've seen him do incredibly well in pretty much all of these games matters. But it's not um, brought a ban out of SK, so they don't fear it enough to ban it out. But at the same time, um, they don't like want the Caitlyn pick themselves, so they don't prioritize that. But it's just another solid pick from Matraco. Yep, they're thinking about the Aatrox. Uh, Svenskera, now that his two main junglers have been taken away from him, could go for an Aatrox. We've seen it before. We've seen a lot of other junglers using this as well. We've been Cyanide and LCS and Worlds and the like. And that is going to leave Thresh, however, open for SK Gaming. And this is something that TCM ran a lot in the previous games. They'd go Thresh, Caitlyn, bot lane and just harass. But now, somewhat, the tables are going to be turned. Yeah, indeed. They've already picked up the Zyra, which will probably be in the bot lane. Um, and with the knowledge that that's going to be a very control-heavy bot lane, in fact, they're going to pick up the Fresh. That always signals to me that they might go for the lane swap up, um, because Fresh doesn't necessarily do very well against Zyra Caitlyn. They have a lot of zoning potential. Plants are going to be very annoying for Fresh to even get close, and it's all reliant on landing those hooks. And Zyra can hang like really far back in lane. Doesn't need to be anywhere close to Nif. So. It could signal a lane swap up, especially if they pick something like Vayne. That that basically just tells TCM that they need that early scout to make sure. So, 345 votes now to SK, 166 <laughs> to TCM, while we're just waiting for third and fourth picks, respectively, from TCM. Could maybe be Lysandra as well for JWoww. Well, we've seen that before. As I say that, he's actually locked that one in for his team, and they have gone for the Volley Bear once again, Paul. So, Lysandra is a character that JWoww can play, but it's also a character that Belgian Beast is very good in mid with. So again, it's that versatile pick, keeping SK on their toes. They never know quite what to expect now. 
Yeah, they prioritized the Caitlyn pick and also the Zyra. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And now they can pick Volley Bear. Knowing that Atrox is in the jungle, um, that's a very even matchup in, in terms of uh, dueling. And the fact that he banned out Lee Sin and Lee, they basically banned out all the bad matchups for, for Volley Bear, including Shyvana. So now they can pick the Volley Bear up and it makes a lot more sense. It's still reliant on doing very well. Um, and it's pretty difficult for him initially to gank a fresh lane. Um, and the counter ganks as well from Atrox won't be as strong as what Volley Bear can bring in, at least in the early games. So, so far it's looking good for TCM in terms of picks. And we are going to see a, another AD carry for Candy Panda going back to his Corky, which is very, very strong. So we've seen him using the likes of Jinx and Vayne. Now he's going for Corky Thresh, which is a very strong bot lane. Somewhat of a kill lane, I guess you could say, if the death sentence lands. But they've gone for the aforementioned Nasus. We were talking about him previously hmm. from an AD carry's viewpoint. is brutal to play against. Could be in jungle, could be at top. They have two champions that are interchangeable, really. But the fifth pick coming in from TCM, they've got 40 seconds and they're yet to decide on anything. Yeah, Nasus is probably going to be in the, t in the top lane. I'm not going to call it right now. Um, we haven't actually seen Atrox for a, uh, a couple of weeks now, but he still is very strong, especially with all these junglers being uh, already picked up. It also looks like the fact that when you pick up an Atrox, and we already know SK likes to go for the three versus one dives, Atrox fits perfectly into that scenario. That's why I was expecting he might also go for the lane swap up, because then they could have two versus one, and they go for that dive onto potentially the Sandra, potentially whoever TCM pick up. But it's going to be very reliant on the early game scouting methods. I think we're going to um, see a lot in the level one um, from both of these teams because both of them really need that information uh, to be able to make sure that their lane swappers work out perfectly. Well, last pick will be Riven. The last time we saw this, JWoww took Riven mid and Belgian Beast went top with Lissandra. So I'm going to be curious to see if they rinse and repeat from that previous tactic. It did pay off pretty well for them, but two very strong compositions here, Pulse. I really can't call it because they both have their strengths here going into game number five. Yeah, um, SK are running a very sort of control heavy composition, and this is what we've seen from them like every single game through this series methods. They um they have very uh high high maneuver high maneuverability teams, high, highly mobile teams who can rotate very quickly and then they look for their picks. TCM like the brute force compositions, and that's exactly what they bring here. But they're still running some disengage, especially in the form of Zyra. Alrighty, well, ladies and gents, for the final time in this best of five final for the EOS Challenger Series number 15, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break and rejoin us. We'll be live for that all important fifth game. Everything has been wiped clean. It all comes down to this. Who is going to win it? SK Gaming versus TCM. We'll find out that answer right after this break.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to this for E-West Challenger Series number 15, Grand Finale, the fifth game in the best of five, 2-2 two to two is the scoreline, and it's going to be TCM Gaming versus SK Gaming. I met this joined by Pulse, and Candy Pilot needs to be careful, he has spotted the five-man lineup of TCM chasing him down, could be some early action here Pulse. Yeah, indeed, both of these teams need the early game vision, and both teams were very aware of that. But TCM are caught in a very nasty position, and SK look like they want to gear up for this fight as well, and they're in enemy territory. They have plenty of CC. If Death Sentence lands into Dark Flight from Svenskeren, it's going to be scary times for him. Svenskeren has yet to pick up his first ability, so this is what a lot of the pro players will do. A lot of the high tier players will do this. They'll wait until that position, that scenario to go in. Phosphorus Bomb comes in from Candy Panda and a consistent poke from Jez's as well. So they've already whittled down Barney D and Matroco down a tiny bit. Here comes the Death Sentence and a Dark Flight and the Ignite as well. It's going to be first blood to Candy Panda. Is he going to be able to pick up his second kill? Flashing in will be the second kill as Nasus takes that one down. Svenskeren needs to be careful. He's pulling himself away now. Matroco has the target painted on his backside. He's going to be falling to Candy Panda who gets his double kill and my goodness Pulse what a horrible start for TCM. Oh what a whitewash Metas and that was so well played by SK. They completely outmaneuvered TCM. They basically forced them into their jungle and in fact what TCM did was very weird. They went up towards the tower and it was like well we literally have nowhere to go and then we can't even get out because Nif was applying the pressure with vision and then all the, the damage was coming in. Candy Panda drops low from JWoww. <laughs> Oh, it's a beautiful death sentence, then Candy Panda flashes the other side, he's trying to juke, but it's not able to do so. Dark Flight comes in from Svenskeren, who still has his blood well available, flashing in there. j has already chugged through the, the uh, red pot, so he's going to be going back to his tower, will be okay. One for zero trade with a couple summoners burnt in the process. Yeah, but at least that's allowed Riven to get a couple levels before Corky be gets back into lane. In many ways, she had to do that, in many ways, that's... Um, pretty pretty bad for Riven either way because now Corky's had the chance to go back, pick up another Darren's Blade, Boots and a Pot. So it's just going to be not fun times for JWoww honestly in the top lane. This is also something we were talking about during the break metas that basically SK will just go for the lane swap up. They don't necessarily want to go against Zyra Kaelin which is an unfavorable matchup. Nasus does fine going 1 versus 2 um, and if they push really hard then he just maxes Spirit Fire and he clears out the wave. Yeah, he can farm under the tower very well with Siphoning Strike and, and get those Q stacks up and running. Riven, however, is not going to have as favourable a situation as uh, Candy Panda with the double kill and the first blood comes back to, to the lane with Mobility Boots. Sorry, Boots of Speed, I should say. That would be quite scary if we were talking about Mobility Boots. But <laughs> well, he's yeah. got the double Doran's Blades. That's the important part. So he's a bit tankier and he's doing a lot more damage. Yeah, and now it's just in SK's favor to just basically snowball out this uh, out this game. So right now, TCM are freezing out the lane, and it's pushing towards di uh, their direction because Nasus was forced to use Spirit Fire. He's in fact just gone into the jungle, gotten that level 3, and now he can assist for the Spence Garen gank. If he gets into lane, he just needs the Wither to come on to Barney to get this follow-up. Yes, he does. Here they come at bot lane. Freddy, 1-2-2 is going in first. Barney D's starting to flash up red. He will be falling down. And Aatrox picks up the kill, and as he said, he called it right before it happened, Pulse. These ganks are so terrifying. Indeed, and Aatrox is in such a good position right now. 1-0-2 already, and picking up the boots this early on means he's just going to completely outmaneuver Volibear. And Volibear just has to stay in top lane. Like, he might be able to go 2 versus 2. He definitely has that potential with Riven, but there's nowhere else really for him to go. Like, he doesn't need to go mid lane because Jezus doesn't have a fun time necessarily against Lissandra. Bot lane is just a very risky gank because Aatrox can always be counter ganking there. Nif just finds him in the bush as well. Narrow Terrador, he's got nowhere to go. Yeah, just has to back on away. He was trying to recall on that bush before Nif uh, pulled him out of it. So instead, he's going to go back to his double golems, try and pick them up. Meanwhile, mid, something we haven't really talked about here, Pulse, because there's been so much action early on. Pretty much a kill a minute so far in this game. Jez is against um, Belgian Beast Lissandra. Speaking of which, Dark Flight comes in. Here comes the Javelin as well. Did they have enough damage? Javelin! No, it's not going to be enough. As the flash goes from Belgian Beast. Still low. Summon a spell popped. Successful gank. Yeah, indeed, and Jezus is not really feeling the pinch of being in an unfavorable matchup in mid lane because the fact that so much pressure is being exerted in other lanes, Sven's Garen can just spend his time in mid lane, it's fine. And his Belgian Beast realizes that and has to be more defensive. And his only real play in mid lane is just to clear out waves, which is not going to be punishing Nidalee. And as long as Nidalee just gets to level 6, then she's basically she survived the laning phase and she's more useful than Belgian Beast, who will be behind because of the rest of his team being behind. 
So it's just a very difficult situation. As a result of her other lanes being behind their respective lanes, she can't do very much. Yeah, I feel, you know, it goes without saying that TCM are in a really difficult situation. It's going to be very difficult for them to pull back this game now. Candy Panda's got rolling early. Already this tower is being smashed upon from Candy Panda and Nif, whereas on the opposite side, Freddy122 has uh, just lost a tiny bit of his tower. So in terms of the lane switch up, right now SK Gaming coming out ahead. Yeah, and these are very safe lanes as well from SK. Not only were they going to go well regardless of the early game, Nasus was like, okay, fine, I just sit in bot lane, wait until the top lane falls, and I just max Spiritfy. Like, his next point, I'm going to Spiritfy well. There it goes. And now he just throws it into the lane, clears the wave, and Matroko and Bonnie D had to back on off. Interesting that he decides to wither the, um, the Zara, actually, to because he could have reduced the damage on the tower from Matroko, but it doesn't matter either way. The threat of knowing that he could wither any time and lead into another gank from Spence Garen, who still has his passive he can be as aggressive as he likes yes and does have the boots of mobility as well so he's gonna be very quick here if the wither comes down you can watch for these ganks coming into effect forcing the flash away though from barney d so another summon of spars been burnt meanwhile mid actually teleports coming down from lissandra i think that was just to get out of the damage from nidalee i didn't quite catch what happened in mid there but flashing up red and got to bot lane yeah he wanted the counter gank but jez has punched him massively he doesn't have cc in nidalee's kit but what he can do is damage um lissandra so much that when she arrives she just dies so it was just a very smart play, but Lissandra needed to react instantly and couldn't get up lane in time to just straight go back. And even if she did, Spear from long range, it's still going to be massive damage. Yeah, Belgian Beast is about a level behind now on Jez's. Jez is nearly 7, Belgian Beast nearly 6. So going to be slightly ahead there, although Jez's has had a, a bit of free time with Belgian Beast teleporting to bot lane to get some farm. Nasus recalling a bot lane right now, and meanwhile at top, JWoww is going to have to follow suit. In fact, they're, they're completely abandoning this tower, Paul. Smart play. They can't keep it alive. They have to, but as soon as SK take down this turret, they'll just um, move their duo lane into their bot lane, go two versus two, and Nasus will have free farm against Riven. Like, there's almost nothing she can do, especially as he's picked up the chain vest. He goes back down bot lane because they haven't picked up just yet, but we'll expect to see that lane rotation very quickly. And Sven's Garen just stealing away these buffs because Volley Bear is forced into the top jungle. Yeah, you've seen SK just maneuvering around TCM to uh, what basically gives them the biggest advantage. And Nara Terrador is now going to maybe try to steal away this blue buff. I'm not too sure if he's going to go for it. Looks like he will pulse, and you can already see that both Jez's and Svenskeren are reacting very quickly to this one. So now Terrador's going to have to back away. Yeah, he can't make aggressive plays. Like, he's trying to make plays as a result of his, being, uh, his team being behind, but he just can't afford to. If they lose their jungle as well, then all the lanes are completely vulnerable. Um, even more vulnerable than they are at the moment. Sven's Garen just picking up, uh, or giving, or donating, I should say, the blue buff to Jezzers. And again, they just need to play it safe. They need to grind them down, make the smart moves, like rotating their bot lane, uh, their duo lane to the bot lane, and put Nasus back into top lane. They're in good shape. Yep, certainly both duos going to bot now, and Matroko, let's have a look at the CS difference, is there much to talk about? Well, Matroko's actually got about 17 CS up on Candy Panda, but Candy Panda has two kills and one assist, plus a tower to his name, so still ahead on gold. And now that these 2v2 lanes come about with Candy Panda having the phage, a lot of the difficulty that the duo lane here from SK faced early on at level 1, level 2 is no longer an issue, Pulse. So they can now trade with Matroko and Barney D easily. He just saw there, chunked half of his hit points with one combo. Yeah, not just that, Bonnie D is only halfway through his level 5, so Sven's Garen down in the bot jungle. I wouldn't be surprised if he looks for the gank. He could just go for the 3 versus 2 tower dive. In fact, he's just going to carry on farming his jungle. He could have done, he still got his passive, and not having the stronger fund for the counter initiate would have been the perfect opportunity. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why Nero Terrador came into the bot lane. He was expecting that dive to happen, especially when they're uh, being choked with vision because they're being pushed, at, uh, pushed back by that like, corky and fresh lane. So he's looking for the counter gank, but... In fact, in fact, he's, he's just got Sven Skarin farming his jungle. Yes, he's getting so zoned out. Matroko has been caught out here. Box comes down. So much burst damage on Matroko. Ignite as well, forcing away the barrier. He should be able to escape as he uh, chugs through a health potion on top of that. And Nara Terrador was coming in for the counter gang, but with Matroko's solo pulse, they couldn't afford to do so. It would have still been a 2 versus 2. Yeah, this is a 2 versus 2 lane now, and Sven Skarin can do whatever he likes. He could go for the 3 versus 2 dive still in the bot lane. He's got the double buff. He's also still got his passive. Could go for a gank on Belgian Beast, and he's actually fearing that. Putting down a, such a defensive water 10 minutes into the game matters. That's really telling of the game. And we've got the gank coming in from Sven Skarin. Uh, grasping roots, but Sven Skarin's all by his lonesome. Here comes the Calvary that was caught 
Loki will pick up this kill. Bloodwell has been popped from Svenskara. Beautiful dark passage will get them away. Smooth moves there from SK Gaming to pick up a 1 for 0 trade. Yeah, really slick. And now they can just put the hurt onto this tower. There's very little that Nuru Terrador can do. And they've got the uh, the, the uh, cannon wave. They've gone for the engagement, or at least just kept Matroko in his place. But it's kind of just delaying the inevitable. But that, that small play has kept the tower alive. But Matroko just came back from Spawn Pulse. Top He's lane. already at 50%. Top per lane. Yeah, JWoww is in one versus one. Duel to the death with Freddy. One, two, two. Flashes away. Does a lot of damage. Both these top laners are pretty low. But with JWoww going back to spawn, it's going to allow Nasus to get some more free farm and actually harass the, the tower as well. Yeah, indeed. So all the Altus turrets are going to be falling very shortly indeed. Jez is just... Uh, Jumping into the jungle, they haven't even managed to clear out their blue buff, um, so they're still going to have the timer on that from both of these teams, and they could just keep up the cycle of continuously just taking those buffs away. Nidalee can do whatever she likes, jumping around the jungle uh, with no real threat, uh, Belgian Beast is going to clear up, away the blue buff. So right now, Meta's there's very little that TCM can do in terms of options. They just kind of just have to hold on. And that doesn't really suit them. That doesn't suit their playstyle. They've gone for a very early game orientated team. They have Riven, who wants to be winning the laning phase and snowball ahead. She's doing average, essentially, against Nasus, who has been farming pretty decently. And Volibear, the pick hasn't worked out. Not because Volibear's a bad pick in this circumstance, just because of the way the game has been going and the fact they got three kills down in the first minute of the game. Yeah, exactly. Hit the nail on the head. If you give SK Gaming a 3-0 advantage from, like, minute two, they are a team that are going to roll with it, Pulse. And they're going to, you know, give them an inch, they'll take a mile. That term definitely springs to mind for SK Gaming. So, right from second minute, TCM placed themselves in such a precarious position. And it was all they're doing, Pulse. Their positioning was just not on point at all. They seemed to chase down Candy Panda, thinking they get a free kill. And in, term, in terms, they actually lost two players to Candy Panda, and then the third. Yeah, indeed. It was uh, some very questionable positioning in the early game, but either way, they're going to just aggress onto Dragon again, another easy decision for them, and TCM are just not in a position where they can even contest. So, conceding objective after objective, this is four big objectives on the bounce matters, and there's nothing in response from TCM. They can't rotate faster, they can't say, okay, cool, you're going for Dragon, we take top tower. Volibear's kind of doing that, but even in this gang, even in this one versus two, I don't think they can win this against Freddy. Freddy is pretty huge right now with that Glacial Shroud and the Rupee Crystal plus the Doran's Blade. He's got a lot of hit points and that's not even taking into effect when he pops off the Fury of the Sand. So JWoww's going in, not doing a great deal of damage and Freddy122, the other bad thing obviously is trying to attack him is he's just going to wither JWoww and JWoww's going to nowhere near put out the same amount of damage. So again, it's a, it's a pretty difficult situation for TCM and all the time that Naraterador's spending at top, he's not having Presence Ultra on the map. Yeah, indeed. Freddy is actually playing this smart. He's like, why is JWoww being so aggressive? Oh, probably because there's a volley bear in the bush. So he just plays it defensively, waits under turret, and then there's no way you can dive Anasis. He'll probably 1v2 you anyway. He's the king of going 1 versus 2 with Fury of the Sand. So, just gonna go ahead and farm it out. Ping comes down. I think they realize where the ward is. He actually walks into the brush. This is not the right decision. It's not, but Sven Skarin is coming up, so can he survive long enough? to get his jungler in contention. We'll be going away with the Fury of the Sands. Here comes Sven Skeren. Freddy 122, so low on hit points. Does Naruto want to chase this down? No, he doesn't. And the big dog will live to fight for another day. It was a little odd from Freddy, because um, just, I just assumed that he had read that. Um, in fact, didn't, and uh, <laughs> walked into the brush. There's almost no um, circumstance in which walking into the brush favours you, so it's a little odd, but it doesn't matter. They didn't pick up the kill, and they've just committed a ton of time into the top lane. Yeah, it's a case of if you walk in the bush and there's no one there, great, you haven't gained anything. If you walk in the bush and there is someone there, holy crap, you've just lost all your hit points and your ultimate. So, agreed, it, it was a bit of a strange decision, but he did manage to, by the skin of his teeth, get away and uh, go back to spawn and pick up some more items. He's got a phage now, so he's even bigger than before. Yeah, and now SK are just going to ramp up the pressure. They've got nowhere else to be going apart from sieging turrets. Nidalee is perfect at doing so, and they have a pretty beefy front line. They know where Volibear is, he's going to go ahead and recall, and again, they can't just afford to continuously concede turrets, but they've been outmaneuvered and outrotated, and Belgian Beast takes so much damage, two abilities down to 50% HP. Yep, fourth tower on the board now for SK Gaming, zero for TCM. I'm having a quick check at the uh, the hit points of the towers. They're all pretty big as well, Paul. So 
This is a very one-sided game right now. Fifteen and a half minutes through, and it looks like uh, pretty much TCM are just going to turtle in. Remember, though, going back to yesterday, game number two, they were over 10,000 gold behind. They did pull it back, Pauls. I would have to say, this is looking more one-sided in SK Gaming's favour, however. Yeah, these are definitely different circumstances. They have decent waypoint. I'm not really sure what JWAL's looking for here. This is not the engagement that they want if they wanted to go for it. Again, they continue with the siege. Matroko is so close to that sphere. They have great zoning potential and they're just going to bat away at another turret. If they're going to go for an engage, it has to be now. They can't keep losing towers like this. They're just slowly but surely bleeding. They're hemorrhaging gold. They're hemorrhaging objectives as well. And for every objective that goes down, SK Gaming are just going to go back to spawn and they're going to pick up more and more items. Rabadon's death cap now for Nidalee, so those javelins are starting to really hurt, especially with the blue buffs, so they're constantly coming out. Now Terrador is going to be engaging, Box has been popped off, Belgian Beast comes in as well, however, Teleport is also going to be used from Nasus, so it's going to be a 5 versus 5 fight to the death here. Stranglethorns has been used from Zyra, knocking up Nasus. They've actually picked up the first kill. This is a good fight from TCM as the Rolling Thunder comes in, but there's the chunk damage from Nidalee's javelin. Picking it up onto JWoww, and it's back to one for oh. one trade. Make that a one for two as the AD carry Matroko gets melted. Yeah, spear from nowhere, and those spears are one of the major factors which is just making it so difficult for TCM to do anything. And their chase potential is so incredibly strong. Oh, Candy Panda going ham. Very nearly claimed the kill on Belgian Beast. He does manage to get away the javelin. My goodness, Pony D's hit points went down there. And uh, the damage has been done, Pauls. Again, they're taking kills, but more importantly, they're taking objectives afterwards. The reason why it's so difficult for TCM to make the mind up whether they want to go for an engage or not is that they have to either 5-0 ace them or get chased down when they try to retreat by Nidalee or Candy Panda. They're so good at chasing down. Like, if they engage, it's either all or nothing. And we saw right there, that was two kills down after the fight had essentially ended and they picked up the tower on top of that. So they have to be very decisive and they can't make that type of decision being so far behind. I've got to credit Nif's play there though, his box was so good, it was right in the grill of Naraterador, so that's one of the, the main counters of Naraterador, it's just hard CC. Yes, if he pops his Rolling Thunder it's scary, but if you CC him down, what can he do? Absolutely nothing. That box was pixel perfect. Yeah, indeed, and they could have just disengaged from that, but it was the right call by SK. Honestly, like, had they not um, had Nidalee right there, that would have been a very, fav a very favorable engagement from TCM, but still, it would have been a drop in the ocean. As it, as it turned out, it still wasn't good. So, now, they're just going to rotate, they're going to get Vision of the Jungle, allowing Nidalee just to poke people down, and Riven's going to get collapsed upon. Yeah, JWoww's not in a good position here. Dark Flight comes in, Blade of Torments as well. We'll be flashing away from the Javelin. Could be okay, but Nif is coming around from the side. Death Sentence lands, will live up to its name again. And Belgian Beast, Glacial Path, too little too late. Both the AD carries at bot lane, but with JWoww being dead, this is a 4 versus 3 at top. Yeah, if, uh, adding insult to injury, they've just decided to have Candy Panda spit push. There's no one who can face up against him. Caitlyn's probably the wisest choice um, because she can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but even then she can't do that well, and they need everyone else for the team fight. So, looks like Corky's going to go ahead and push mid lane. They just need to grind TCM down. They don't need to do anything risky, wait for their cooldowns to happen, or disengage if it doesn't work out. That's all they have to do, and it's so difficult for TCM. It is, because if they if they force an engage and it does not work perfectly, they're going to find themselves down and out. Now, Derrador's passive just got popped there from another Nidalee Javelin. So, Jezzis is throwing them in and he's on point pretty much all the time. His accuracy has been phenomenally good this game. Now they're going to be smashing down the mid turret. And there's nothing that TCM can really do about this. Belgian Beast could potentially go on, but he doesn't have his flash. Tower goes down, now looking for that in here. Yeah, SK rotates so quickly that even though TCM are in their own base, they couldn't even mount a defense in their inhibitor turret. And they can't afford to get into these sieging scenarios with Nidalee is just continuously throwing javelin, continuously chunking people down. And that threat alone is just making it impossible. They have to go for the engage. They do, but they land the engage on absolutely nobody apart from Nasus, and that's exactly what they did not want to happen there. Matroko is going to get crushed. Stranglethorns comes in from Zyra, so that heavy disengage is off the table. You can see SK Gaming like, okay, no problems. We still win this trade. We'll take the inhib and just back away. Yeah, and right now, they can do anything. They could go for top tower, which is, in fact, what they're pinging towards. And if TCM weren't able to fight at their inhibitor turret, why should they be able to fight at their inner turret? So another easy objective for SK. And then the next play would just probably to go to, go to Baron. It forces TCM out, and there's no way they can win a fight near a Terrador. He's still looking for that pick on the right person, but SK playing it smart, keeping the people in the right positions. 
Oh, Belgian Beast is thinking about making gauge. This may be a desperation play though. Frozen Tomb comes down. A really good ultimate there, but here comes the box. Now Terrador's flying out. Nasus is going to fall to the Ignite. One for two trades. Still in SK Gaming's favor with Natroko dead. And Candy Panda on full hit points. They probably are going to be able to take down this tower. In fact, JWoww's coming back in for seconds. Forces to flash away from Sven Skerin. Yep, and... That was basically the best engage that they could have hoped for, and it still didn't work out. And at this stage in the game, matters, if this was at the start of the series, I'd be saying, well, TCM need to reevaluate what they're doing with their team composition. It worked out fine, it would have been a perfectly good team composition, but their call early game really crippled them, and has eliminated a lot of the options they would have had at this stage in the game. And this is the fifth and final game, matters, so they have to go big or go home, and Potentially, Baron could be the throw zone, but there's no real reason for SK to even go for that. Yeah, they don't need Baron, do they? I mean, we've already said a couple of times that they can afford to fight on towers 5 versus 5. So, even though Baron would be a nice boost to their stats, to their global gold as well, of course, and the buff, it, it's still not required. They can win completely, comfortably, without the Baron. They can just rinse and repeat. It's not just Nidalee that's good at poking, though. It's, it's Candy Panda as well. He's got a Triforce and the Sork Shoes. So, when he's firing in the missile barrages and the big one, which is, of course, his ultimate passive, then he's going to be chunking players down as well. It's just brutal to deal with. Yeah, and they're hitting huge problems in terms of items. You have one big item being completed. Well, I guess two big items if you look at Volley Bearer as well, but that's 2,000 gold. And then you look at the team of SK, they're already completing, like, third big items. You've got the Trinity Force looking towards the next big item from Corky. Rabadon's an also on uh, a Fiend's and Holy Grail from Nidalee. It's just going bad to worse, and... If they stall, they get poked down by Nidalee. If they engage, they still lose. It worked out well for the last engagement, but there's no reason for SK to play this aggressively. Well, Belgian Beast thinking about this again. Ace in the hole goes down onto Jez, and now Belgian Beast is going to be falling first in this fight to Nasus. That's a two for zero trade. They're cleaning this one up comfortably. Candy Panda's full hit points. JWoww's going to go down, or will he manage to survive? No, Blade of Torments will pick that one up. So three for zero trade, as we're saying, do not need Baron, and that's probably going to turn into another in here falling in SK Gaming's hands. In fact, it's not. The Surrender Vote came in. Yeah, and there was no coming back from that one message from TCN's perspective. A very short-lived fifth game. I, I don't really know what to say apart from that level one team fight completely through the game for them, Pulse. I don't know if there's much to elaborate, really. You got Candy Panda getting first blood and double kill. The lane switch up came into about. They won that comfortably, and from there on in, it was just one-way traffic. There was no way for TCM to stop the onslaught. Yeah, they just got hamstrung by the initial engagement. I'm very curious as to why they decided the Duke upwards. Basically, just uh, they were just a fish in a barrel for, for SK, who had the superior level 1. They were trapped in their jungle. The only other play they could have made is just to like all flash over the wall. And honestly, at that stage, matters that might have been the uh, the call that needed to make. But, you know, hindsight 2020, you can't make that type of call in the, in the heat of the moment, and they also figured, well, we might be able to fight this one out, but not when you corner yourself against a Nidalee. Even level one, Javelin damage will start to mount up. Oh yeah, and that's what happened. They landed three or four Javelins before going in. So it's a case that when they finally got round to fighting, Matroko was on about, about half hit points, and so was Barney D, the support. So it, just all around, it was favoring SK Gaming. I, I can't help but feel that the Red Mist descended Pulse, and they just tunnel visioned on Candy Panda, because he was by himself to start with. All the five players from TCM chased him, and then suddenly, oh crap, look, here's the rest of SK Gaming, what do we do? So it may be just over-aggression that paid out for uh, SK Gaming and, and really was the Achilles heel of TCM. Yeah, indeed. But anyway, guys, that will conclude the best of five series.